If you grow plants indoors, you are working with electricity. And did you know that the most dangerous voltage there is, is the one in the outlets in your house, 120 volts. It kills more people than any other voltage because it's the most common. And that means, which is one mistake, your grow lights could kill you. I got the grow lights fired up right behind me. Just doing a little bit of winter growing in here. I got some shoes on. They got a decent rubber sole on them. For lighter voltages like 120 volts, the electricity cannot go through your body and exit your feet to ground when you have good rubber sole shoes. I was going to show an example of this where I touch something live while wearing shoes and show that I can't even feel the electricity flowing through my body, but YouTube decided it was not appropriate for all audiences, so I took that part out. The good shoes will stop it from going to your ground through your heart, but it's not going to stop electricity going from hand to hand, which also crosses the heart. Electricity is always looking for ground. Now ground could be something metal in your house, a concrete floor. Many different things conduct electricity, but electricity always wants to get to ground. In 17 years as an electrician, I've had some bad times. 120 through the heart will wake you up. 220 will knock some sense into you. And 277 is like having a magnet hold you in the air that you can't escape from and a semi hitting you in the chest. It's not fun, and in certain situations where you can't get away from the electricity, it is going to kill you. It only takes a tenth of an amp to kill you. When you're picking out grow lights, look for this. This is the most important part of any plug. This is the ground. So if your hot wire came loose inside here and hit the side of this, your ground plug is going to send a signal to your electrical panel to trip the breaker. If you don't have a ground and the hot is resting on the metal here and you touch it without shoes on, the electricity is going to go through your heart and out your feet into the ground and you're going to have a bad time. Now you probably won't die because you'll be able to take your hand off the electricity, but it's going to wake you up. If you have heart problems, it's not good. With our grow lights, some of us are using a lot of water. Water and electricity do not mix. And this is where GFCI protection or ground fault circuit interrupter devices can help us out. So you might be someone that comes in here with a few too many squirts, maybe you get it all over your lights and that's not good. But if you use GFCI protection and you get a little too much water on here and the hot wire somehow finds that water and travels to ground, it's going to trip out on the GFCI unit. And when that trips out, it prevents you from getting hit with electricity. If you look in the bathroom of your house, you should have some GFCI receptacles in there. They are required within six feet of any water source. So generally around the sink area in the bathroom, you're gonna see this. You got a nice little button on there. You press it to see if it's still working right. And with your grow light setup, you can accomplish this by installing GFCI receptacles or you can use external devices where you can plug extension cords or other cords into it. So, so far we're at wear shoes while playing with your grow lights. Make sure you have a ground plug and use some sort of ground fault circuit interrupter protection. And lastly, let's talk about overloading circuits. If your house is wired correctly, if you overload a circuit, you're going to trip a breaker. A tripped breaker is telling you something is wrong it does not mean put a bigger breaker in. That's a really good way to burn your house to the ground. Most of the circuit breakers in a house, we're gonna have some 15s, some 20s. So these 15s, they're gonna have smaller wires on them. They're gonna have number 14 gauge. 20s are gonna have number 12 gauge. So let's say I had the 20 amp breaker right here and it tripped and I go ahead, throw a 30 amp in there that's no good because the wire coming off this is number 12. It's only good for 20 amps. If I put a 30 in here, it will not trip to save me. It is going to burn this wire. So this circuit where it goes through your house will just go up in flames if this does not trip to protect you. So it's not the number on these breakers. It is the wire size that dictates how much amperage we can put on it. 
So know how much energy you are drawing with your lights. I'm going to link a video to teach you how to calculate that. And when you see these people talking about 10,000 watt specialty grow lights without doing a special installation with bigger wires by a qualified electrician, you are just a house fire waiting to happen. So before you start your plants this season, go out, get some new kicks with some solid rubber soles on them. Get some GFCI protection, some grow lights with ground plugs on them and don't overload your circuit if it trips it's telling you it's not good and grow some food without getting hurt thanks for watching